Okay, we're going to treat today's notes like Cornell notes. So I'd like you to draw a line down the left side of the page. We're going to put some algebraic examples on the left. The first one we're starting with is a plus b squared. This is a follow-up to our multiplying um, binomials and trinomials using the box method. <clears throat> but this is with special cases. This is when we have something like x plus 2 squared. We could rewrite that as x plus 2 times x plus 2. So when we make our box for this, we do this. And down the side, we put the same number because it's squared. What is our x times x going to give us? x to the power of 2. And x times 2 is going to give us 2x. And we end up with another 2x up here. And down here, we get 4. <clears throat> okay, we're going to now add our like terms, and this is where this becomes an interesting pattern we're going to start seeing. What happened with those like terms? Combine. They're the same, and they combine to make it 4x. So we rewrite the answer as x squared plus 4x plus 4. Let's do a similar example. Three X plus two Y squared. We're gonna make a box. <coughs> and the same two terms go across the top, three X and two Y, as go down the side. We end up with 3 times 3 is giving us 9. x times x gives us x to the power of 2. 3x times 2y is going to give us 6xy. And what happens with this box? 6xy. What do you notice about the like terms again? They're, they're crosswise and they're the same, aren't they? Okay. And then down in this box, we're going to end up with 4y squared. So we rewrite this as 9x squared plus, what's our combined like terms? 12xy plus 4y squared. And we leave it like that. I'm telling you we're leaving it this way because we talked in our other the other day about standard form for polynomials is that we put the highest exponents first. We don't need to worry about standard form here. Leave it in the order you found them when you multiplied them. It will make it our next thing when we're factoring polynomials easier. Go ahead and draw a line. Our next example is if I have an a minus b squared. We're ending up with perfect squares on these. Notice the 4 here is because of 2 times 2. The 9 here is because of 3 times 3. Everything that we're going to end up with here are perfect squares in the corners. And then the like terms. Watch and see if they're identical again. Let's try x minus 5 squared. x minus 5 goes across the top, and x minus 5 goes down the side. 
what is our x times x? Mm -hmm. And this term is going to be what? Negative 5x, and then again? Negative 5x, and? 25. Positive 25. This is not zero, what is it? Yeah, negative 10x. So we end up equaling x squared minus 10x plus 25. One more example like this, 4x minus 3y squared. For x, negative 3y, same down the side. What's the 4 by 4 times 4 going to give us? 16x squared. We're going to multiply the 4 times the negative 3, getting us negative 12xy. And what do you think is going to be in this one? Same thing, negative 12xy. And then down here, we're multiplying negative 3y times negative 3y. What's negative 3 times negative 3? 9y squared. We're going to combine these like terms. Negative 12xy and negative 12xy gives us negative 24xy. So this whole thing equals 16x squared minus 24xy plus 9y squared. Are you guys noticing that both of these in the middle have a negative? Because we're adding negative like terms, that's always going to be the case when you have a negative in the middle of this. And what happened at the end? They're both positive because negative times negative is giving us a positive here. Okay, final special example. When we have a plus b times a minus b. You guys are so quiet. It's like you've tested this morning or something. Who tested this morning? Yeah, sorry. X plus 6 and X minus 6 is going to be our first example. So let's make a box. And across the top, we're going to do the X plus 6. And down the side, we're going to do the X minus 6. And let's fill in our grid. We get x squared, negative 6x, positive 6x, and what's negative 6 times 6? Negative 36. What's happening with my combined like terms here? They cancel each other out. They cancel each other out, so we get 0. That means the answer to this is x squared minus 36. That's going to happen where you end up with just two terms. Every single time that your terms up here are the exact same numbers, except there's a positive in one and a negative in the other. Let's show one more example to prove that. We're starting with the number first this time, the constant. 7 plus x times 7 minus x. Our last box of the day for the examples, and then I'm going to give you guys some practice work. 7 and positive x, 7 and negative x.
again, we're going to get perfect squares because 7 times 7 is going to give us 49. Negative 7x, positive 7x. And what happens when I multiply x times negative x? Negative x squared. First thing I want to do before I write my answer is combine my like terms. And my like terms is a negative 7x and a positive 7x. That gives us 0. So our answer is 49 minus x squared. Okay? So here's some practice problems today. Again, this is the last lesson in Chapter 7. We are going to delay taking the Chapter 7 test until SBA testing is over. I'm planning on it being a week from Thursday. Today's work is, num is on page 525, numbers 21 to 38 and 63, which is actually on page 525 or 526. And then if you're caught up on everything, if you check Skyward and everything else is turned in, work on the study guide on pages 530 to 533. Okay? Questions?